Good, how you guys doing? I can't complain, I like the beautiful weather and yeah, we're just living life, you know? Just hanging out, you know? What you doing? Just hanging out, you know, listening to some music. You guys want some water? Flat straight. Flat earth. Yeah, what do you think? Hey! Yeah. Uh, dude. You think so, huh? Yeah, go Why is that? I don't know. Why do you think the earth is flat? Well, I mean, I can observe water lay level and flat always. The earth is round. Hmm. Round like a penny? No, round like a ball. Oh, okay. Because you've seen it before, right? Yeah, we have. Well, how do you right know here. that? Right here. Oh, okay. So, um, so this is an image, right? This is not real, right? It's a picture. And so when black people think Jesus is black and when white people think Jesus is white, is that true? No. No? no. Why is that? Because they don't know. They're, they're yeah. not there. Never seen it, right? Yeah. Okay, but what if we make a picture of Jesus? Is that true then? No. no. Oh. But that's what you think. You just pointed at this and said this is your home. But I, I, I've seen it. You've Are seen there? it from that perspective in outer space before? Yep. Okay. Well, I don't like liars, so don't come to my table and lie to me. Okay? And you haven't seen the ball from outer space before because you're taking NASA and government officials as testimony. And that's no different than reading the Quran and saying that Muhammad did this and Muhammad did that. That's faith, right? So you're taking faith that this is where you live based on someone else's testimony. And that's not true. We could do objective tests here on Earth and see that water lays level and flat always. So if water lays level and flat, even with the oceans being a massive scale, right? There's just a big lake, really, is what the ocean is. It's just a giant lake. How does it then bend to make a sphere? So, so what are you saying? If the earth is round, water should be round. No, what I'm saying is, is in my opinion, the earth goes, the earth and water and resources go on infinitely forever. So you're saying it's flat. So like, flat, but, is flat is a description. Yeah. I could say level, right? Because something can be flat. Like if you're going to hang a picture or like a shelving unit up on your wall, yeah. it could be flat, but is it level? Nope. Right. So the only way you could find out if, if that shelving unit or picture is level is by getting a water level up to it, right? Mm -hmm. And then using that as a means of your totem to find out something's level and flat. So, so like, you know, there are like, Satellites up in the sky and astronauts. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So astronauts are prophets to you, no big deal. But this is a satellite, right? Yeah. Okay. So how about this guy here? Is this a satellite too? Yeah. Okay. Like Does this look more real than this? Which one looks most real to you? One. This one. Yeah. Okay. But where is it? Oh. Yeah. Where is this located? On the ground. Roof. I don't know. What's that? Trees. A tree. So where do you think this is located? Okay, Somewhere. so probably a bunch of eighth graders did this. So, so somebody probably put this together, a bunch of eighth graders, right? So they say this is a satellite, but then when it's in outer space, you get CGI images. So how do you know satellites exist if all you get of outer space is CGI? Those are, those are eighth graders who like professional like scientists. Yeah, this is professional photoshopped. Yeah, so you go to school for a couple of years and learn how to make images and stuff. So this is a professional photoshopped image. I will give you each a, uh, a water, okay? Go on your phone and Google image Earth from space, satellites from space, okay? And then when you come back, show me each one that looks real to you. How many waters do you think I'm going to give out? Zero. Why that? Because there's no real pictures of Earth or satellites from outer space, because outer space doesn't exist. I already got water though. So, but what, what there's a ceiling the above us. I you familiar water. with that yeah. idea? No, <laughs> yeah. How can there be a ceiling above us when it's daytime and then yeah. nighttime and you can see the stars? Uh, yeah. see no, the totally, light. for sure. Yeah, this what? is the new topic. And laughing, mocking, and ridiculing a new topic before you hear it all no, no, is probably not the best way to go about it, right? True. Right? So, you feel, you, in front of me, you look like you have a teachable spirit. And I would encourage you on your own time, by yourself, investigate this topic on your own and kind of see where it leads you. Because what might happen is that you'll realize, could you have a paint can, you know a paint can? Can you have a paint can without it being contained in a pressurized system? Can you? No, right? 
So how can you have our environment here and then outer space, which is the absence of water vapor and pressure next to each other without a container? You can. Have you ever heard the Big Bang Theory? Yeah, that's religion. Again, you've never seen a planet form or a fish turn into a lizard before, have you? So you're just believing that, right? Billions and billions of years ago? If you want to choose to believe that, no offense, that's up to you, right? But you've never observed that with your own eyes. So I have no problem with faith. It's just that what are you putting your faith into, right? Well, we, well, we grew up with this. So. I know, I totally get that. And I grew up with it too. But just four years ago, I came across the idea of this. And I compared it to what I was taught. And what this means to me is this means sounds more true in my heart, I guess. It resonates with me a little bit more. You have your own opinion. So, you prove this, what do you get out of it? I get to hang out and, you know, well, what do you enjoy get the weather. You just have to. You'll have to witness my testimony, man. Um, you know, because I got a YouTube channel here, okay. and I come out here all the time. And I don't know. I, I can't tell you what it changes or what it does for you. You know, that's up to you. We're talking about you. Yeah. What is what is belief in the Quran do for you? I'm asking you. Yeah. Right. But I mean, would you say that you? Would you say that you hang out with people that believe the Quran more than the Bible? Who said that? Doesn't really. I'm just asking a question. Right? So, are we all believing in God? Read the Bible? What do you uh, believe in God, right? I personally have. I believe in a creator. I in God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also believe Jesus Christ is not a prophet. He's but, okay, that's, manifest that's, in the flesh I mean. as God. I don't have a problem with that. So, that's just my opinion, right? But that's faith, right? Yes, yes. Okay, I have to choose to believe that. But what I'm telling you is objectively, all of us can observe water laying level and flat. get out of it? So, what do you get out of it? What the fuck? At the end of the day, bro, what? That's what I get. What do you get? Hey man, that's up and to you, man. What do you get out of this? What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. You're just not ready for it. That's fine. I mean, I. This ain't no living life. Yeah. Let him live his life. Yeah, I mean, how, how is it that you can judge me for what I do in my free time when and when you do what no, no, you no, do, we're right? Not no, I'm talking to him. I'm, I'm not talking to anybody else. It's just me and you, right? No, man. So I'm just asking you, what do you get out of your life and what makes you so passionate about what you do? Okay. Yeah, fair enough, man. Yeah. Have a nice day, man. I hope you have a nice day. <laughs> oh, have a great day, bro. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Hey, you guys. You want a water? I don't have water today. Yeah, no problem. Sailing for three hours. Yeah. Where'd you, you went sailing? Yeah. Awesome. Did you rent or did you have your own? I like race there and stuff. Oh, you uh, race? It's like a club membership. Thing. Okay. It was pretty windy yesterday. Were you out yesterday? Yeah. I was on the talking yesterday. Oh, right on, man. Cool. So, what's flatter. happening, fellas? Not much. Just cool. saw you. I want to see what's going on. Yeah. You Steven Crowder guy. Uh, yeah, you know, I mix it up every once in a while. I've been doing this for a while, so I just try to... It's a way to, for me to draw people in. You know, I wear a lab coat sometimes. That's fun, you know. But, yeah. So, do you happen to give me... Um, so, it says hashtag motionless. Do you have any proof that you could change my mind that the Earth is in fact moving and spinning? Because I feel that we're pretty stationary right now. So do you have any proof that you could provide me that the Earth is in fact moving and spinning at a thousand miles at the equator? No, no, that's not hmm. mad. Interesting. But you have a core belief that this is where you live, right? This guy? Mm -hmm. Okay. A little fun experiment I got for you. Which is the proper size of America? Do you happen to know? Just off the top of your head? Which is like between these? Yeah, between these two. Yeah, just kind of narrowing it down. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I mean, I don't know, but I know like the whole, I know the whole deal with like the, the something projection with the, you know, the standard map where you see it's not shaped exactly like the globe, like the kind of more ovular one where it does make things look bigger. Like Canada is not nearly as big as it is on the map, right? The same like a Mercator map, map you're yeah, talking like, about? Like it makes, yeah, yeah, like mm -hmm. it makes Greenland look way bigger and Canada, everything towards the you know, sure. poles yeah. look way bigger, but like... Mm -hmm. I mean, so what, what do you got? You guys got a, any questions? I mean, because if you, if you look at these two images here, let's just, for argument's sake, because they are, the diameter of both of these circles is the same. How is it that America is this size here and then it's this size here? How'd yep. You, how'd you get this? <clears throat> Dot gov NASA. Both of them. I mean, no, because Earth's not a perfect globe. Yeah, they take it from different angles, that's all. 
Earth's, Earth's not a perfect globe, right? Mm, okay. Everybody knows it's shaped like a, it's, it gets smaller. That's that's why, like, when you fly, mm. you don't fly straight. Say you're flying from, you know. You don't fly straight? So, you, you don't fly, like, if there's something at the same latitude level, you don't fly straight there. You go up because it takes a short amount of time. It's like when you're flying, say, here to China, you go up over Alaska. Could you show there. me here, maybe? So you're flying here. Yeah. Instead of going all the way around here to mm -hmm. China, right? You yep. fly up and over Alaska because it takes less time because there's less of a distance because Earth is, you know, it gets smaller as you go up. It's shaped more like an oval, not a perfect okay. circle. Yeah. Well, this looks like a perfect circle to me, which is a great band. Maynard. It can be really close to a circle. We yeah, don't know do the you exact eccentricity of it. Oh, what's this we stuff? I. Okay, yeah, don't. fair you enough. Might. You mm -hmm. could, you might have done research. Mm -hmm. I don't. Okay. And so, uh, like, why is it that you have a core belief? Do you happen to have two proofs that you could provide to me? So I could just get off this flat earth stuff and just say, hey man, the earth is a ball. Here are two proofs. What are your two proofs? Like, why is earth not flat? Is that what you're... Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, I myself can just like, but I'm sure like other people can and other people have. Okay, so well, you're appeasing to authority like a Catholic does to the church? Yeah. Can, okay, so, so you're in a religion then is what you're saying. No? Mm -hmm. Oh. Have you ever so been? So what are you in then? I mean, I don't understand. Like if, if you can't do something yourself and test it through the scientific method, the three of us, like landing on the moon, for example, how do we, the three of us, verify the government did it without ever, taking government testimony? Have you ever been to the ocean? Yep, I have. Okay. You can see, if you haven't looked far enough, you can mm -hmm. look far from one of that, you can see there is a clear curvature. Clear? Or, like... To, or have you seen Have you seen pictures taken like from the top of Mount Everest? I've seen pictures or video, guess, allegedly, right? Say that's from a high you altitude argue, balloon at 20 miles high. You could argue okay. Well, I'm, what I'm saying is, is how high is Mount Everest? Uh, what is it? I don't know the exact height, but it's... I don't actually know the exact height. Okay, really. so can we just say, for argument's sake, I'll give you five miles high. Okay, just, just to say five miles, right? Um, a high-altitude balloon goes 25 miles, and there's still a level flat horizon. So... Oh, yeah, sure, man. Here you go. Yeah, have a nice day. You guys want a water? Go for it. Can I also have this bus? Yeah, of course. Yeah, have a tasty beverage to wash that down. And so, uh, even your boy Neil deGrasse Tyson says that you won't see curvature ever. I'm just saying, you know, that's what he says. I don't necessarily agree with him. Over the horizon, why do you see the mass first? Yeah, do you happen to know why? 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 Why is it that they told you? Curvature, though. Okay, so that's an incredibly small Earth if you see curvature at within 10 miles, in my opinion, right? And with that, that's what she just grabbed, number. she grabbed the curvature calculation because to have a ball in a geometric shape as a sphere, you need curvature, right? And so over a distance of a body of water, because you want to use water as your totem because it always laid level and flat, we can see things too far over water. And so the idea that they teach you in school, which you've probably never observed this yourself, they just tell you through books, is that when the ship is traveling further away from you, in the morning, the water and the air temperature and everything are cold, or much cooler, and they have more of an equilibrium with each other, and you'll see things far away. But as the sun beats down on the water, it creates water vapor, and so that water is going to heat up and it's going to obscure your view, and then you'll, it'll give the phenomenon of things disappearing over the horizon. But you could take a high-powered zoom lens, like a P1000, and zoom that object back into focus, and you can see it again until it travels further away from your perspective. And that's really what it is. It's just a convergence point of the ground and the ceiling, the sky, meeting. Okay, so and again, if Earth is flat, why isn't there a limit? There isn't a limit, no. I think the Earth goes on infinitely forever, it's personally. Like an infinite plan like a Minecraft world. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prove me wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, they say outer space goes on infinitely, and if you believe that, you're appeasing again to authority and saying, yes, NASA, please tell me everything because I bow down to you. But for me, I just critically think, and I just say, I don't choose to believe that. But unfortunately, if I don't go along with mainstream news and media and science, I get called names and people make fun of me. Yeah. That's not fair. If I was out here promoting transsexuals and how to turn a five-year-old into a boy and vice versa, 
I would have high fives, people would be giving me candy, and they would support me. No, I understand the same thing. Like, you know. I'm generally a more conservative person going to a super, super liberal school. Mm -hmm. I can't voice my opinions there out of fear of being ostracized or, you know, sacrificing my relationship with teachers and stuff like that kind of stuff. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So what is free speech here in this country now? Is it appeasing to authority or is it actual free speech and opinions? Free speech is never, I don't, free speech just can't exist. I don't think. Is free, does free speech have the right to be offensive? That's what I think you should, but realistically it's not smart to speak freely then because you're sacrificing. Yeah, the sure, there, costs, you have to right? weigh, right? You have to weigh the consequences, yes, you right? You have the choice, you, you could, <clears throat> it's just not smart to. Right, right. yeah, right. I pick my battles, right? I choose to talk, people ask me, who is it? Who is it? The Masons, the Jews, the Jesuits, the government, the Illuminati. And it's like, you know what? I don't know. I just know that water lays level and flat always. And when you get that in your heart, you'll know that water doesn't bend to create a sphere like the oceans. And then the higher you get in altitude, the horizon rises with you also. Okay. And then the third proof that you live on a flat level plane is have you ever been to the ocean? Okay, and then the sun is traveling further away from you, in my opinion. It's much closer and local, but it's just traveling further away from you. And the sun ray will actually come up to your feet on the shoreline, right? So the sun ray will come all the way up to your feet at the shore, right? Okay. Have you been there? Have you I experienced mean, this before? I'm not, I'm not, not, I haven't thought about it. Okay, has anybody experienced the sun ray? The sun, like, coming up <clears throat> to the shore? To, to your feet, yeah. When, yeah, okay. If the Earth were a ball, for example, that sun ray would only come up halfway because it has to have curvature and the sun and the light can't bend over that ball of earth, of water. Then why is it so, you know, in Dubai, the Burj Khalifa? Yeah, you can climb up sun. in and you see the sunset again. Yeah, yeah. Sunsets yeah. 27 minutes later, something like that? Right. No, it's like five minutes, but I see where you're coming from. And of course, you, the higher you get, you're going to see more land area and mass. Yeah. That's just perspective. But if it's a flat plane, you're not like. <laughs> if it's perfectly flat, that sun's gonna, no matter where you are, that sun is gonna go past that plane at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. everywhere. Do you happen to know what the horizon is? Like what it is or how? Yeah, what is what is the horizon? I mean, it's just whatever the limit you can see is. Right. So the convergence point, right? So just before I explained how, at a at earlier in the day, you're gonna be able to see things far. And later in the day, you're gonna things are gonna just be closer. And what happens is there's the air temperature and everything, right? But the horizon is always alleged. You cannot put a measurement on what the horizon is. Yeah. You can put a measurement on me sitting here in the buildings across the street, right? You could do that, but you can't, in all realism, uh, put a measurement on what the horizon is. I forget what the which bridge it was, but I don't remember the name, but it's somewhere, it's, it's on a super long bridge. Yeah, they're saying they actually Golden Gate Bridge and stuff? No, long, okay. it's way consistent. Yeah, I know, I think I might know what you're talking about. It said they didn't build engineering, right? They had to account for, no, a they couple, didn't. for the a couple of millimeters that the earth is curved to change the angle. That's a total wives tale, man. I don't no know. engineer ever makes a bridge over a body of water because of curvature. Now they might curve the bridge because of, yeah, they had for to, whatever they had reason they want to. No, 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 no. Yeah, they, they, would, they would only the curvature, curvature the bridge because of nostalgia and to make it look aesthetic, pretty or something yeah, like that. Aesthetics. I know what you mean, but I'm saying yeah. in order to make sure it was stable, putting the pillars in the ground, they had to make sure that at the right angle, so they would still be level with each other because it's like, if the earth is like this, it's not. Right, the pillars are like, like, like But it's not though, so. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Um, why is this issue important to you? I, I can't explain that. Why do people believe in Jesus? Why do people believe in Muhammad? You know, I mean, it just, yeah, you, just like you know, so I've been into this for four years and it's just a gradual progression. When did you first learn about it? Uh, I would say late 2015. Okay. And it just like clicked in, in your mind or something? Like something Within like, like two or three weeks it did because yeah. water lays level and flat. Yeah. Um, I already had a an idea that the moon landings didn't happen the way that the government prescribes them to be yeah. and i doubted a lot of the stuff that happened up in outer space yeah. but i'll be honest with you when i was in 2015 i had this on my screensaver on my computer this photo this image yeah yeah. yeah so i had this on my screensaver because even though i thought the moon landings were a hoax i still thought i lived on a ball earth yeah so what is it about that like the, is it the fact that you think that the government is lying to us about the way things are? Is that what's like frustrating you and making you want to like tell people about it? Or you're just like, you just want people to... 
I'm just sharing my thoughts and opinions and just challenging people to critically think now that we're adults and we don't believe in fairy tales anymore. So if you believe that gravity can make a massive ball of water bend, you know, if you can, if you think that water, an ocean can gradually bend, then that's magic. So are you saying you don't believe in gravity? I'm saying that the phenomenon of why things fall to the ground in the floor is called gravity, but we don't know what gravity is. In my opinion, I think that there's a pressing down, like a pressure, because that's what we live in, is a 14.8 or so PSI pressure system. So there's a pressing of down, because you know that experiment where somebody flings a tennis ball or whatever over their head and then they say gravity, because if you spin that tennis ball fast enough, it will reach a terminal velocity point and get into orbit, right? But what is that string? Nobody can define what the string is. You can tell what the ball is, right? Because that's tangible, but you don't know what the string, the imaginary string pulling it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, so you say, you say water always lies flat? I would say in behind you in a lake and everything, um, but the meniscus and all that stuff, yeah, water like tension. tension yeah. I know all about that, my friend, yeah. And that's not anything to marry. It's to consider and look at, but water behind you in a lake and the ocean lays level and flat. If we didn't use water to make a skyscraper then they in a, in a plumb bob, then they wouldn't be straight and level and up and down properly. So, Just because water always lies flat, that's, just, that's, just, that's what you can see. Like if the curvature is so slight as it is, like that's how not, big Earth is. No, it's not. I just, I just, could you want to take a picture of this or Google it and say earth curvature calculation at six foot observer height and find out what your ball earth is supposed to do and what it actually does. And it doesn't bend. You live on a level motionless plane and no offense, <coughs> but since you've been here, no offense. Okay. Don't take this personally. But you've just been regurgitating stuff like yeah, somebody so who's a Christian regurgitating Bible scripture. So you're I'm appeasing to different sources. I'm trying to use different things. I'm letting you explain them. No, I know. I, I I appreciate you letting me and you're a great listener and I appreciate that. And you have questions that I usually get from most people and I respect your ability to be challenged with this, right? But I also want you to seriously and critically think about what I'm offering you here, okay? Just that's all you gotta do. Just grab a card. Uh, I'm gonna actually premiere a video tonight at nine, so Whoa. you know, so in a couple Wait, hours. So it's like flat, but also round in your paradigm. Um, so that like I didn't make that card. Um, the Hebrew idea of what we live is more of like a snow globe idea, uh -huh. and so the sun would circuit around like this. Uh -huh. And uh, what most people who identify themselves as flat earthers, particularly Christian flat earthers, would say that there's a dome firmament over us. And so that the Antarctic ice wall, which is 60,000 miles in circumference, holds all the water in. But for me, I am also a Bible-believing Christian, and nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that we have measured anything. Because Job is having a conversation with God, right? And God's asking him if he was here when the foundations of the earth were made and measured. And God and Job couldn't say anything. And an interesting thing about that, too, is Isaiah 40, 12 talks about waters not being able to be tangibly measured. So you can say earth and all this stuff, but water, okay? Water could go on infinitely forever, like on Water World. Water World, yeah. So you said the earth goes on, it's like an infinite plane, right? Goes on forever. Yeah, why not? Is the sun one thing? Like, is if you get farther away from that, should they not? Allegedly, right? Depending on where you are. Yeah, allegedly, but I've never been far enough to where I've experienced no sun so far south. I have a friend it's south that, direction if it's not. Yeah, the southern direction, the opposite of north, right? I've, I've never been that far south to where I would experience um, six months of darkness, complete darkness, you know, like they described. So right now in, quote, Antarctic, if the Antarctic ice wall were real, they're experiencing almost, you know, what, six or seven months of darkness right now, in a way. And I have a friend, Daryl Marble, shout out, he did, uh, went up to Alaska and observed the, quote, 24-hour sun, okay? So anytime that you've ever seen video of the, quote, South Pole, it's always um, kind of edited in a way. Like there's not a consistent video of the sun in the South Pole 
at a 24 hour like you can in Alaska. How come sun intensity isn't a constant? And it's constantly changing, right? Because even even the equator, like it, it, that's where it gets the most intense, but it still is weaker at sometimes because the Earth's rotation kind of changes that, changes that angle, right? Supposedly. I asked you to prove me wrong about the rotation of the Earth. You've never seen the Earth tilted at 23.6 degree, uh, 23.4 degrees, have you? Why does, the, why does the intensity of the sun change? Right? I don't know, man. I didn't make the sun, right? But I can give you ideas, right? And the sun is just uh, light in the sky, and it might be an electromagnetic type of a light that has a particular relationship with the North Pole. And it's significantly closer. It's dark in, in the North Pole. Like, I've been to like, in Sweden, right? In the sum summers, yeah. it's, it's light all year round. Yep. Winters, it's dark. It's 18 hours. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Sweden is up here, right? Is Sweden down here? Okay, so saying. it's still the sun isn't always super strong. It's not always there. Yep. Right? Like, right. Yeah. So the so sun does this doesn't... when, for example, this is totally projection and an idea just to help challenge you. Okay. The sun might do a circuit like this when it's summertime. See how it's almost right above the United States here. And then as it becomes winter, it gradually starts to, to do this. And then it comes back up. Now it could vortex up and then come back down. <laughs> But how far is the sun away from the Earth in your reality? Do you happen to know? Uh, I don't know the exact distance, no. 93 million miles. Okay. Yeah. So, with that being said, there's some ideas with like thermodynamics and heat transfer and stuff like that. So, how is it the hot sun can travel through the empty vastness of space, which should have no matter, and it's void of water vapor, have sunlight come and hit the Earth, and then all of a sudden it's hot? Like that breaks laws of thermodynamics. Yeah, but it's traveling through a cold environment and then it's coming to here and heating back up again. It's not, it's, there's nothing. Nothing's cooling it down. Really? Space is cold. Have you been there before? I haven't been there. It's here, I haven't been there either. So, again, you would be appeasing to authority. And if you believe script, uh, science books, those are scripture. When we launch rockets, where do they go? You don't do anything, you watch them. This is we stuff is really as humans. We as humans. Okay, so race. so where what do those rockets when go? A rocket is launched into the sky. Where do those rockets go? They go they, through the atmosphere into outer space. Is what I believe. What okay, if fair enough. There's a ceiling. Then why don't they hit the ceiling? They do. Down. How do you how do you know they don't? Did you know that there's at least five down. videos out there that show, for example, super fast rocket hits the dome at allegedly 70 miles. It goes. It shoots up all the way. Type in super fast rocket when you walk away. So have what you seen that fast? video? I've seen the video and I can take it for what it's worth, right? Have you seen videos of like other so you weren't I have, races? yeah. And when I watch um, SpaceX or any other uh, entity launch their type of rocket up in the air, you can see the video which looks genuine. And then when it gets to releasing the first or second booster, it switches to CGI. And then it gives you this idea of how it's going into outer space. Think when they're sending people up, how come those people that get sent up there and the rockets come back down? Safe? Who's going up there? Astronauts. I mean, there, there were people on the Falcon X flight, weren't there? With the, with the they might be, the but you know, going up fifty going up fifty miles is in outer space. It's not even reaching the Kármán line. The Kármán line is the barrier between our atmosphere and outer space. So they're not even going high enough to get to the Kármán line. Of course you can. Um, practicing with, I'm not trying to disprove you, I'm just curious. No, I, I um, want you to I, be, speak what, freely. Um, what do you think is the motivation behind like the uh, falsifying of space travel and like the round, like why, what is the, is the conspiracy motivation behind? Are you really ready for my answer? I, yeah, I'm curious. Are you sure? Yeah, let me Okay, so what do you think about aliens from outer space? Okay. Do you think like there's other aliens from outer space on other planets? Will you help me? Just for argument's sake. Um, I can be open to that. Again. Okay. So, um, you familiar? And no offense to anybody who is, but I feel like this is an agenda. So, if a man wants to transition into a female, and a female wants to transition to male, is that that's called transgender, right? Yes. Okay. And then there's an idea of human beings being able to incorporate computers into them. That's called transhumanism, right? Okay, so it takes 15 to 20 years for society to become comfortable with a new idea. Because human beings, they're scatterbrained. They're, they can't multitask. 
They need things gradually given to them. We could have been given touch screens back in the 90s, but we're not ready for that type of technology. We're not ready to be hit in the mouth with all that at once. We need things gradually given to us. So what I feel, in my opinion, that the establishment is doing is it's getting society comfortable with male and female in one entity. In Genesis 1 and 2, it talks about how we will create man in our image, both male and female. So what they're doing is they're misinterpreting that purposefully and saying that the ultimate entity that they want to become is both male and female in one entity, and that's called a Baphomet. Are you familiar with what a Baphomet is? Okay, they worship this type of a being. Who worships them? The establishment ah! does. Uh, the occult, yeah. hidden people, the one percenters of the one percent. So these are the people that worship that type of ideology. So what they want is people to become comfortable with seeing people who have more of an androgynous <laughs> feeling to them, where when you look at them, you can't tell whether they're male or female. Okay. And this is a gradual period over time, okay? Yeah. So let's say, going along with my thought, that the Earth is an infinite plane, okay? If you were to travel south here and go on, let's say, for a month and keep going south, there's another landmass that you've never known before. What if we all came from here and we were put here and this race of people are androgynous already? Or we would call them aliens, right? Can you backtrack? Yeah, of course I can. Yeah. Uh, what about going south? So, we're tra so this is north, right? Yeah. So what does the compass always do? Okay, so if we point our compass north, can we go south? Uh, we could go, yeah, we could go south. Okay, fair enough. So whichever direction you want to go would be south, right? So if we pick a particular way that we want to go, say we want to go on this line right here, and we want to go south. What if we travel down this way a month, boat or plane, and there's another landmass over here? Like another planet? No, like another landmass. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, and then so this landmass over here has what people would consider aliens. So what is an extraterrestrial? It's just extra terrain. So you're just talking about like other, other cultures? Civilizations, other yeah. Civilizations. Mm -hmm. okay. So that are more advanced than us. They just have a better understanding of magnetics and the ether and what people would consider anti-gravity, right? Yeah. And so what if this race of people are androgynous okay. and they need to get people to be comfortable with seeing entities that have both no male or female features to them. Because that would look odd to us because we wouldn't be able to differentiate between male and female. That's how we've grown up, right? But now over a period of time, they're giving us an idea of um, having both male and female in one entity. And so for example, if you were to see a ship all of a sudden appear over Minneapolis, like on Independence Day, for example, would you think that that's a UFO from outer space? Yeah, I like the word. Okay, fair enough, right? So you understand what magnetics, how magnetics work and stuff? A magnet? Okay, so when you have a disc magnet and you have another disc magnet, could you flip it and then have it repel? Yeah. Okay, so what about 5G? Are you familiar with 5G? Okay, so 5G is a new technology that we're gonna have for our phones where you can literally instantaneously download things almost immediately okay and they have these node systems through our city right now and they're putting up these antennae in neighborhoods and 5g runs on millimeter waves so they have to be close to each other within uh, at least 200 feet to communicate with each other so each tower works as a neural net like our brain does okay follow me here so if we were to have let's say a hundred thousand of these antennae in a 10 square mile area, just for example, and we were to amplify the, the frequency from those 5G towers, we could repel something possibly, like a magnet. Okay. And so let's say that back to the civilization, yeah. let's say that they built a ship that looks trendy and it looks new and it looks futuristic, but it just works on magnetics and it hovers over because it's just using the magnet magnetics oh, yeah. from the 5G towers, okay. and it just hovers over. So to the layman, they would think, oh my goodness, that's anti-gravity, right? And then they would come in and have all these fancy tricks and you know, yada, yada, yada. But really, I just revealed to you, it's just simple magnetics and an understanding of that.
Okay, so the 5G towers could be used as a means to um, display their quote power, but really it's just simple understanding of electricity. Because if you wrap like coil around magnets and electricity, you can increase and amplify that frequency or decrease it. So you would repel the ship and make it look like it's hovering upwards, or you could allow less frequency and it would come down. Now, would it make a sound? No, it wouldn't. And then people would think it's anti-gravity and an alien from outer space. Because you have previous testimony, in my opinion, coming from the CIA, that would say, I saw a UFO and it didn't make any noise. In my opinion, that's a, sh that's a government agent putting that idea out there to get people used to the concept of a ship coming and not making any sound with just basic use of magnetics. You connect all that back to our original question because I believe your question was, you know, what's the point? Yeah, what's the point? So they're going to fake an alien invasion. Oh, that's not what I thought you were saying. Yeah. Okay. They're going to fake an alien invasion. Why? Because you need to worship somebody else. Because we will have a world government and a world religion and a one world language. We'll have? We will have that, yes, soon. And you and will we call the Antichrist. Are you opposed to that? No, I want it to happen so that I can get off of this place and we can restart and God can come back and burn everything down. You're okay. familiar with so, Meshach, so, so. Meshach and Abednego, right? Back in the day with Nebuchadnezzar. So read Daniel 3. It's a fascinating story where these people, these three prophets, just really quick, they wouldn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar and his statue that he had made. So what he did is he threw them into this, you know, 10 by 10, um, you know, room and he lit them all on fire, but they didn't burn. And they didn't burn because they had the spirit of God in them. And so he, Nebuchadnezzar looked in and he still saw them still alive. And he told them to come out. And then he, he said, well, you know, wow, like I am not a king. The one that you worship is king. So the idea would be there's a particular um, heat or frequency that those people had in their heart right because that's what we live in we live in a mag we live in an electro type universe that has frequency and vibration and light into hey. it right hey what's up bro what up, dude? um and so as that pro as that thought would progress when god in my opinion comes back he will burn everything because he's not going to flood it again he's going to burn it so if they ever say that they're going to flood if something's going to like the white the ice caps are melting right that would mean that the earth is going to be flooded again so that's not him doing it. That's us doing it. And whenever you see the number 666 involved, the six is man. So when you think of the earth rotating around the sun, right? It's rotating at 66,660 miles. Do you know that? Yeah. So it's a weird number because that means that man invented that uh, circumference around the sun. I thought you said it was 93 million miles. I, 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 that's what I said, yeah. But that, that's, this, that's the Earth in what you would consider gravi gravity orbit around the sun. Yeah. That's your model. I'm just I'm trying to appease to you so you can understand how they're Im implicating their uh, essence into the religion that they call science. So, so, are you, so it's not 93 million miles? So not at all. I think the sun is probably at least 100 miles away. I thought you just said it was 666. No, I don't think you're following me here. Yeah. Okay, and what'd you say about the six? I said say? the earth. Hey, bye. I hope to see you again. So here's the sun, okay? Yep. And here's the earth. Yes. The earth is rotating around the oh, sun. The circumference is 66. No, the orbit. The orbit is 66,660 yeah. miles, okay? The rotation of the earth is 1,000 miles at the at the equator, right? And then the sun is with the is with the the solar system at uh, 500 about 500 million miles an hour. So how do you how do you back to what we were saying before in relation to like uh, motion, right? How do you measure the rotation of the Earth, the speed of the sun, and everything when you don't have a reference point that's relative to know how fast everything in the solar system is moving? Because there's nothing in space that's stationary, man, right? Yeah, man. I'll see you soon. I'm gonna leave a couple of my cards here, yeah, do it. I'll hand some out. Yeah, dude. Thanks, man. That, Not man. a problem. Stay after it. Dude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, see you around. <clears throat> so, does that kind of make sense? 
Because if you're born in a on a car that goes that's going 60 miles an hour, for example, I do see what you mean. Like nothing is ever like you're never nothing is ever in the same place as it was. Everything's moving in space. Supposedly. It's moving to our perspective, right? But just because the ceiling is moving doesn't necessarily mean that we on Earth are moving. What if everything's moving at a constant speed? Everything moving. Everything is moving together at a constant speed. Like that. That distance isn't changing. Okay, but how do you measure, measure that? If everything is moving at the same speed, how can they tell us that the Earth is going like around the sun? That's like you can measure the difference between two cars. Like, that's like if two car, one car is going zero miles an hour, another is going thirty. That's still the same difference between sixty and ninety. I hear that. I, I hear you. I hear you. But that's tangible because we can test that here, right? You can't test how all the stuff up in the sky unless you use math magic. Just because you use math magic to know that you can land on Mars doesn't mean it's a tangible thing for you to do. Math doesn't create reality, okay? Just because you can use math to land on the moon doesn't make it real. You can still measure, like, I mean, you can measure things all day. Like, Measure how, yeah, you can how, how interior angles work, and you can measure an on arc here and Earth. You can measure an yes, and you can measure an arc length. You can see how fast it's going, how many rotations it'll do in X amount of time. Like you can figure that out. That's not that. Well, hard. Yeah, you're assuming that like all laws of physics apply everywhere in the universe, but he's saying that there isn't a universe. So, so you don't believe in math. You don't think math is like what this world's built on. Um. Well, what came first, the discovery or creation of math? There's, there, there, that is the part of it. That, that science can't explain that. That's fair. Okay. Like, there's, there's not science can't explain everything. That's why I do believe there is some sort of greater power out there. Okay. Yeah. Like, great. But math. Hang on to that, man. But don't math, get so caught up in science and math and everything. Because math. how do you how do you measure coincidences? What do you mean? I mean, what's a coincidence? What's a what's divine intervention? How yeah, do you measure that's that? Fair. You don't know, and I like. You don't know. I, I think. Humans maybe aren't supposed to know yet, mm -hmm. right? Maybe there's another life. I, I, I do believe there is certainly something after death. Things aren't dead. Yeah. But I think maybe the human brain is just too small to comprehend something. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you know, most of the, you know, when I was working in restaurants, I feel fairly com comfortable. I could probably work on three or four tickets, you know, three or four different meals or whatever. But depending upon the day, sometimes I'm scatterbrained and I can only focus on one thing. And really, like, one or two things is probably the maximum of what a human being can multitask with. But there are some things that, like, that some things are just too vast for people to understand. Like, like the universe. Like I infinite. Don't, I don't think people truly understand how, yeah, how infinity works. Like, that's just too big for the human brain to comprehend. Mm -hmm. But, again, you're assuming that space is real and it goes on infinitely forever because of what Hollywood shows you. And you're saying that Earth is a plane goes on infinitely. I'm just forever. saying this is objective reality that we yeah, can observe, I yeah, right? You don't know. So, whatever it is that they tell you about outer space, again, you're appeasing to authority just like a church. You're doing the same thing. Like you said, you're, you believe the Bible, right? Is that what I can abs I can accept that faith, and I will tell you straight up, that is faith. Yeah. But you need more faith to believe you live somewhere you've never seen before, which they tell you is reality. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Who needs more faith? I need more faith to believe a man can walk on water and live a perfect life. Or that you live somewhere that you've never experienced or seen before with your own eyes. So you're putting faith in that. You're saying, but you're taking, yeah, you're, you're, you're. No, I'm saying that water lays level and flat, and with the idea that the Earth was flooded, again using a non sequitur, right, to prove that the Earth was flooded in the first place. But in my opinion, all of the civ previous civilizations, in their stories, whether it be Chinese, Japanese, or American, for example, would say that there was kind of a deluge. Del deluge of a flood, you know, just a massive appearance of water. Okay. I don't mean to offend you by saying anything. You can say whatever you want. But like, by like, you're, you're saying that like you believe in the Bible, right? Yeah, sure. So why? I'm just, what gives that more credibility than what other people say? I would rather believe God and my Creator than man, so and that's God, what He tells so me to do. Choice. Yeah, it's it's my choice. Yeah, I'm consciously believing in my Creator would create a place that goes on infinitely forever that I can experience and enjoy than just being all tied up into this area right here like a farm animal, you know? But also like, yeah, what, well, what change? You're not tied up like a farm animal. That's why we're getting to that point where we're starting to be able What's to What's this we space. stuff? You keep bringing again. You we keep as bringing a up we. race. Mm -hmm. That's why I say it. Okay, yeah. well you can't. If you choose to believe that humans can go to outer space, just, just have discernment, because I will bet you it's all gonna look like this. CGI, animation. But what's the benefit for believing in one over the other? 
that's up to you to decide. I can't tell you that. I can't tell a person why to why believe in Jesus. Like that has said, to be them, it, man. It really, it, it's almost trivial. It doesn't hurt us either way. Okay, well, it's up to you. You'll find out, I guess, right? So, do you guys want another water to go? I'm all right, thank you. Okay. But yeah. I, I respect what yeah, you think. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, it was a really good conversation. Like, yeah. I, yeah, not a problem, man. I hope to see you guys around again. Yeah, no. You I'm know, gonna... mull it over, and if I see you in a couple weeks around the lake, Fuck it over. it's up to you if you want to chat again. Oh, but yeah, totally. No, yeah, totally. You know, stop by in, uh, you know what, an hour and a half or something like that on my YouTube channel. I'll premiere that video at 9. So, right, cool. you can That's just get fun. more of an idea of what I do. Yeah. Good talking to you. Right. Yeah, yeah, you guys too. Have a good, good one. Bye.